I was there during the time you were created. You looked so small and vulnerable, but I knew important. I thought nothing of you at first, but Father insisted I'd look out for you as an older brother. You are my inner son. When you looked at me with violet eyes, I could see fright and confusion on your scaly little face. Tears of somber washed down and say things that made you feel so alone, frightened, and cold. It was that day on that I would take responsibility and watch over you, raise you until you can defend for yourself, my little brother. Little one, be not afraid, for I am no creature that will harm you. No need to cry in fear, for I shall keep you warm and safe until you gain your form, and that I shall be there when you accomplish that task. When you were taken home, the kid thought you were a new pet. You seemed confused, but at the same time, you didn't mind the child homunculus being excited about you. But I have told your being that he took in, he took charge of in taking his care, share of care into you, which you seem to love his caring, cheery, hyper attitude that it brings a smile upon my face. When you regain your form, you look similar to me and the child who cared deeply for you. You grew into his and my nature, becoming something completely new that I was surprised. And yet, even you share this with others who are your enemy of prey. You show us homunculi, that you treat us like we're your only family, that you feel warm and safe with your brother. I shall always be there for you. When you need me to help stop your weakness from showing. As years go by, you become the sin that you were meant to represent. I couldn't be any more proud of you. I see how you've dealt with the full metal pipsqueak and his tin can brother. <sighs> you were sneaky and had a dark side of humor. Dark sense of humor. You were having fun and taking pain upon others. Yet you were like Rap's teen counterpart. Those are my looks. <laughs> Which I find kind of funny. Your shape shiftings were impressive, yet you haven't tried to outsmart them. I was always there to make sure to make sure you made it through even if you didn't notice. I'm always there to watch for your mistakes so that we can improve it together because we're brothers and I, care, I dearly care for you even if you neglect me at times <laughs> yeah I feel like those times when we were f we would fight it's only natural in what we get on each other's nerves it's all part of sibling relationships. You idolize me, yet you show your envy to me when I can do something that you wish you could do. We have family issues too, but we cannot live without each other. For I am always there when times get rough. But when I'm not there, I wonder how you'll do without my guidance. Yet I can feel that you may do fine. However, my theories took a turn for the worst. Once, once your form was ruined by the Crimson Alchemist. E but even so, even so, you still survived, which to my relief, that you were alright. No, you could find a way to Gain what was once yours. I shall be there for you, my brother. Your final face off of the flame alchemist was a harsh struggle for your survival. Your philosopher stone energy was running low. You needed a new one. If you kept going, 
and I don't wish to think about it. I had to give you a fresh one, which I had quickly gotten and hurried to you. But when I arrived, I saw with horror that it was perhaps that the pastor was doing to you, setting you on fire. Just what he did to your sister, only worse. I had to do something, but with one final blast, your body was once again destroyed. You were reversed back to your true form. How, how weak and helpless you were, vulnerable that you were frightened and couldn't muster the strength to fight back anymore. That's when the flame alchemist was about to make you suffer. I was not going to stand for it. But before I could get the chance to give them a piece of my mind, the bitsqueak and brother and the crimson alchemist, they come to stop the carnage. You were then held by Edward's hand. I had never seen him give a homunculus such pity and sympathy but also upset. Your jealousy got the better of you. Well, you did the unthinkable. You thought your own full officer, son. You crushed it. Well, <sighs> crushed it. My eyes widened. My legs freeze in place. I could, could not do anything. I could not move at that moment. I truly couldn't do anything to prevent, nor did I see this coming. As you vanished with tears bidding me words goodbye, I soon felt tears roll down my cheeks. I collapsed to my knees, hands to my face, as I sobbed my heart out. If only I had been there in time to prevent this, I couldn't be there for you. Now you were gone. As I continued to cry, I had no idea how long I had been crying, but I knew I couldn't feel right now. I blame others, but I mostly blame myself for not being there for you. Like I promised, you were my little brother, the one I loved so dearly. And now you are gone. I feel so empty without you. And please forgive me for not being there in time. I was called by father again. For he knew what had, I mean, he knew how important you were to me. In fact, he was testing how close our bond was. Shaped over the years. He had never seen such a tight one as it was. He wanted me to be, to hand he had he wanted me to hand him the philosopher's stone that he he had given to me and hold some of my memor my own memories of you. With a miracle, you were reborn anew. Much to my surprise, you were taken uh, and regained your form. For the first time in a long time, you looked at me with sadness and slight joy. It, that warm tears, tears fell from my eyes. A smile came as we embraced in a heartwarming reunion hug. You even cried of happiness yourself. Then I knew that you were just happy to see me as, as was I. Envious, you truly are the best little brother any homunculus could ask for. You were your own person. I envy your older brother. Have pr promised this when we first met. I am always there for you.